All right, guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing part one of a video series on how to use certain specialty tools when you're in the mechanic or automotive industry. This is for people who are just trying to repair their vehicle at home and they need a specific tool that they don't have, or this could also be for the beginner mechanic who's trying to get their foot in the door, but they're not really familiar with some of these tools here that I'm going to be showing you. So like I said, this is part one of a video series I'm trying to start up here. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and let's go get it. All right, so the tool I'm going to be showing today is a cooling system pressure tester. Mine is from OEM Tools. Um, this is just the one that I have is a relatively inexpensive one. It comes with these three adapters, and it comes with the actual pump itself. And then I also, with it, bought the adapter set for pressurized reservoirs. We're gonna be going over both types today. Um, some of them connect directly to the radiator. Others will have a pressurized coolant reservoir that you'll need to use these adapter tools on. I've got two vehicles here today. One has a pressurized reservoir and the other one has just a straight radiator connection. So I'm gonna show you how to use this tool on both of those systems. Stay tuned. I do want to mention when using this tool on a regular you know car truck van SUV just your regular commuter vehicles you don't want to exceed 16 psi I mean you can go just a little bit higher but when you're using this tool if you exceed that 16 psi which is the limit of the system then you can actually end up causing a leak rather than just locating one and also I want to throw out there as well make sure that the engine is relatively cool before you start this uh, test those are just a couple of safety precautions I want to throw out there for anyone who's new maybe unfamiliar with using these tools just a quick recap do not exceed 16 psi and do not do this test unless the engine is cool. Alright, so on our first vehicle here, which is going to be my van, um, it's just got your regular radiator hookup. So we're going to take this off. I don't know if it's completely cool yet, so it may have a little splash. Nope, we're good. It's definitely hot. You do want to make sure that the uh, engine is cooled down enough to where you're not going to get burned by hot coolant here. So now we're going to go ahead and connect the tool. Whenever you're using just a regular radiator connection, you're going to want to just spin it right on there. There's no adapter or attachment really needed for this. And then I like to give it a spin one time, 180, just to make sure it's locked in. But I'm pretty sure as long as these notches and the thing that spins are perpendicular to each other, then you should be good. So the next thing you want to do is just start pumping up the system. Get it to about 16 PSI, which is the white square in the top middle. And then if you've got a coolant leak, it will start to drop. How fast it drops will depend on how big your leak is. But then what you can do is you can start checking your hoses, your engine, the radiator, all the different um, cooling system components, and this tool will help you to locate a coolant leak. Now, if it happens to be leaking inside the engine, like a head gasket or something, you may need to do some further diagnostics if you're noticing that the level is dropping but you don't see any coolant leaking anywhere. Um, but otherwise, most of the time it is going to leak on the outside of the engine. If it does leak on the inside, you can remove the spark plugs and put a boroscope inside the cylinder to see if there's any coolant getting in the cylinders that way. I do also want to mention that not every radiator cap is the same. There's like three or four different kinds of radiator cap. My van happens to have just the older style or the standard size, I guess you would call it. That size is likely going to work for the majority of your American vehicles that have just the straight radiator connection. 
but these other adapters um, they screw on um, this one I don't think actually changes anything I think this one might just make it a little taller but then these other ones here you can kind of see that this one has those little teeth on it. it's designed to screw onto a radiator and then it, it's basically an adapter that changes it from this size to the regular size and then this piece will screw right on top of it there and then here's of course our other size here I believe that there are um, two different types of radiator caps that are on Japanese type vehicles your Honda Subaru Nissan those type of vehicles um, Toyota uh, those where these adapters are going to come through and um, some of them have like a a round ear shape on both sides and then other ones were going to have like a more pointy shape and I think one of these is for one and one is for the other but I believe that most of the time you're only going to see that particular type of radiator cap on your Japanese vehicles the other two I like I said I think this one is just to make it taller if you need that extra room and then this one is just going to attach to the radiator the adapters are going to be mainly used for pressurized reservoirs and most European vehicles are going to have a pressurized reservoir. Unfortunately, the two adapters that I have here are not, um, they're pretty much just American. I think one of them is for Ford and one is for GM. So if you're going to be working on a lot of European vehicles, then you're going to unfortunately have to buy some additional adapters that are specialty for those vehicles. Now we're going to move to the second vehicle which has a pressurized reservoir and it's just a little bit different. Alright so here we've got another vehicle, it's a 2007 Ford Taurus. This one's a little bit different because it has a pressurized reservoir. Pretty much the same procedure except you're going to need an adapter like this to screw onto the reservoir just like that. Then you pretty much do the same thing all over again. You'll connect the tool here, just like you did on the radiator, and it should spin on. And then you do that, that should be on there good. And then we can start pumping up our, um, our pump here, and the gauge should go up again. And um, once again, if you have a leak somewhere, whether it be a hose, the reservoir, freeze plug anything like that you'll you'll start looking around once you get this up to about 16 psi you'll start looking around and then you'll be able to locate your coolant leak if you have any other tool ideas that you'd like to see me do a tutorial on if i have one i'd be happy to do it just link it down in the comments below thank you and that's going to be the end of our video for today. I appreciate y'all watching. I really hope you learned something. And stay tuned for the next video and the next tool where we'll be learning about something else that you can use on your way up to the top in the mechanic industry. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.